VidIQ costs money, but what is the return on that investment? In the past year of using VidIQ, I've increased my views by 143% to 1.3 million, and my click-through rate has gone from 5% to 8.6%. I'm gonna break down how VidIQ did and didn't help with that, so by the end of this video, you can know whether it's worth your money. So how does VidIQ work? Well, you sign in with your Google account and then link the site to your YouTube channel. This will give you access to the site's main dashboard, so we'll go over this first, although the extension is in some way even more powerful, so stick around to find out about that. The web homepage has great shortcuts to all the most useful tools, but I wanna draw your attention to the menu on the left. These are all of vidIQ's tools organized by purpose, whether you want to optimize your videos, research new ideas, create content, or chat with their AI coach. The Optimize tab uses AI to scan all of your current titles and thumbnails and rate them in effectiveness. You can see that this new video about artless and epidemic sound is rated really high, and if I click on it, it'll tell me why. It matches the topic, it's emotional, it's got visual harmony, etc. It does the same thing for the title and you can even preview what the video will look like on YouTube to see if it catches your eye or if it gets lost in the mud. Overall, I find this tool really useful, but mostly as like a second set of eyes. It doesn't really know everything it's talking about all the time. For example, it says that the title for this video, Everyone is Wrong About the Canon PowerShot V1, is weak. But in my human opinion, their top recommended title, the Canon PowerShot V1, Myths, Misconceptions, and the Truth, is way too long and a lot less intriguing, a lot less emotional than mine. And the stats say I'm right because the video is doing pretty well and it's got an 8.4% click-through rate, which is on like the high end of typical. All that is to say this page is helpful, especially if you're new to YouTube because that core guidance is there, but it is best sometimes just to trust your gut, which is why I much prefer the next set of tools, the discover tools. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go over all of these because that would take ages. I'm just gonna focus on the most helpful ones. The outlier tool basically scans YouTube for any topic that you want and shows you what videos are doing really well in that keyword niche right now. I searched photography and you can see that many of these videos are performing 19 times, even 100 times better than the channel usually does, which means that it might be a good video topic for you to rework for your own content. This page is good for topic research within your niche, but I actually think it's implemented even better in the extension, which I'll show you in a minute. First three more tools that are pretty cool, but not super usable all the time. The Daily Ideas tab comes up with video topics based on your channel. These are okay, but really only good when you wanna get out of a rut. The Competitors tab allows you to track analytics from other YouTube channels in your niche to stay on top of what's working for them. And the Subscribers tab takes note of all the other content and channels that your subscribers are watching so that you can be informed and make content that your subscribers already like. The really powerful one that I use in every single video that I create is is the keyword research tool. This is my go-to tool for planning videos because it allows me to see how much web traffic there is and how many people are interested in a specific topic and then how much competition there is for that topic on YouTube already. The rising keywords tab has just all of the trending topics across all of YouTube. The top search terms page shows what search terms are bringing the most new viewers to your channel, and the top keyword opportunities page is a sort of combination of those two. It shows the best keywords for you to target within your own channel niche. You've got three main columns, search volume, competition, and then an overall score that combines the two to let you know how good a keyword is all things considered. If we focus on this one, Artlist AI, it's a great keyword for me to use because it's got low competition and rising search volume. This is because Artlist is my go-to site for image, video, and voiceover generation. They have all the best generative AI models in one place, from Google's Nano Banana to Sora 2 and VO 3.1. That means you can generate an idea of your image, animate it, and create text-to-speech voiceovers for it without ever switching tabs. They have dozens of amazing voiceover models to choose from, and you can even clone your own voice. Then, with a single click, you can add accents, emotion, and special effects to the generation, or use voice-to-voice -voice generation for complete control over the tone, pacing, and delivery of the script. Artlist is truly a one-stop shop for all of the creative assets you need because on top of all that awesome AI stuff, they still have their incredible music, sound effects, footage, templates, and LUT libraries, all of which are covered under their super simple license that brings peace of mind to the copyright clearing process. I have a link down in the description that'll give you two free months added onto any of their annual subscriptions, so if you're interested, make sure that you take it advantage of that. 
Thank you Artlist for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to talking about vidIQ's keyword tool. My process for using vidIQ's keyword search tool is really simple. I just think of a product or service that I wanna review and then type that keyword into their search bar. If it returns a keyword score of like 65 or higher, then it's good to go, I'll green light that video. The helpful thing is that even if a specific keyword that I use isn't very highly rated, they'll recommend similar ones that might perform better. This is hands down the best tool that vidIQ has. It has increased my views massively. The third category vidIQ offers is creative tools. And I'm gonna be straight up, personally, I don't use these at all. The thumbnail builder can be helpful for coming up with ideas and visualizing things, but it's just not polished enough to create a finished product yet. And thumbnails in general are so niche and so driven by an individual creator's style that it's hard to have a one-size-fits-all AI tool for it. The AI scriptwriter really isn't anything better than ChatGPT or Gemini, so that's not a selling point either, but their clipping tool actually shows a lot of promise. Personally, I don't make the type of content that really lends itself to AI short clips. But if you've got a podcast or do more educational type videos, this is the best short clip creation tool I've tested. It works pretty quickly and it gives you all the controls that you want over things like captions and styles. Plus you can publish them to YouTube shorts directly from vidIQ, which is really sweet. Now we're about to hop over to YouTube to talk about their extension, but first I wanna mention the AI coach. This is basically a ChatGPT agent built into vidIQ and it can be really helpful because it's link to your YouTube channel so it can give you personalized advice based on your own analytics. It's really helpful. When it comes to YouTube strategy, ideation, and optimization, this is my go-to AI tool, but it really deserves a full breakdown on its own. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know down in the comments. VidIQ's webpage is one thing, but some of my favorite tools actually come from their browser extension. This integrates directly into YouTube and brings a lot of features from the vidIQ site over. If you see a video or thumbnail that you really like on YouTube, you can just click on the remix button and it'll give you video ideas using the same template, but tailored to your content. You can also go to any channel and see their channel stats as well as their trending videos, which is great for ideation. When it comes to your own analytics, YouTube Studio can still be pretty confusing. But with vidIQ, you can pull up something called the channel audit, which basically takes your most important analytics and makes it really easy to understand what they mean and how it could affect your future videos. This is broken down really simply as content to double down on, which is basically your top performers and content that needs work. Basically, these are super super helpful at a glance analytics for the person who hates analytics. Finally, the upload tools are awesome. When you upload a video, all of vidIQ's optimization and keyword tools are integrated right into the upload page. They test and recommend better titles. You can preview your thumbnail. It'll write an optimized description for you. This thumbnail builder sucks, so don't use it, but their keyword inspector makes the awful task of adding tags incredibly quick and easy. These tools alone save me a ton of time every week. So the question is, do I think it's worth it? Well, we have to look at price. vidIQ Boost costs $200 per year or $19 per month if you pay for it monthly. Think about it this way. If you have an average monetized RPM of $5, meaning every 1,000 views you get, you earn $5 on YouTube, then vidIQ really only needs to increase your yearly views by 40,000 for it to just completely pay for itself. In the past year of vidIQ, my views have grown 143% to 1.3 million with a click-through rate of 8.6. Those are real results. I just think anybody should be able to give it a try and I don't want money to be of any object to you, so I'm gonna give anyone who wants it a whole month of vidIQ for one single dollar. I've got a link that'll give you that special deal down in the description below. So if you want to try it, I highly recommend it. I hope it helps you break through on YouTube. And if you need awesome music and you want to know the music that I use to edit all of my videos, you should watch this video up here. It'll run you through all of your options this year.